All right, so the time's come. I'm getting ready to do this. No kind of introduction, no nothing. We're gonna go ahead and start putting coilovers on the front of this thing. So what I gotta do is just rip the tires off, set it to ride height, and uh, start cutting. Now I got the axle fully drooped, which is fine. I'm gonna let that stay there. I'm gonna go ahead, rip off the factory springs, bump stop, and shocks, and really let that axle just hang out. And then we can start doing the cutting. So one thing I did prepare here, and I've been preparing for a while, is getting all this stuff out of the way. And the driver's side is a little bit harder because of the brake booster or the brake uh, master cylinder and whatnot. But We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. fun stuff kind of out of the way um, I'm just trying to figure out if I want to go ahead and start cutting all this stuff off now I just got to move the brake lines kind of pull them off the axle a little bit uh, you can see my active uh, drip here so water got in oops sorry water got into uh, the factory uh, spring spring uh, perch there uh, probably from up here yeah probably from up here um, so yeah now I'm kind of kind of torn do I do I rip all the, the bracketry off the axle first? Well, I gotta do one or the other because I can't do I can't do this project without doing both. So um, let's fire up the plasma cutter. At least I'm wondering maybe we should clean up the axle first. Let's clean up the axle first. Figure out right where I want to put my uh, shocks, which are going to be as outboard as possible. Um, and I'll tack them up in place. And we'll uh, we'll go from there. So uh, hang out one second. Let me go get the plasma cutter. Start cutting. All right. So off camera, I uh, raised the axle up a little bit. I hooked up the old Bestark uh, BTC 500, uh, 500 DP Series Seven, and we're gonna give this thing a fair shake. Now, in my last video of the review of this, now I made some mistakes, and I'll own it. I was not wearing gloves. I wasn't wearing a lot of protective equipment. I did have my glasses. However, some people didn't think that was enough. So we'll go ahead and try this and see what happens. If, if this isn't working good, then I'll break out the old um, uh, Cut 50 and uh, go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and put this thing through its paces. I try to set the axle up the best I can. Um, it is dirty, but I cannot wait. I've been waiting since, basically since I installed it to get this um, assembly off the axle. It's just gangly. It's huge. It doesn't sit right. I've never been happy with it. So this is my chance to cut it off and uh, set it up the way I want. All right, let's try this. I really don't like it.
I went ahead and switched to my arc captain, so we'll see if this works any better. Alright, after a few more minutes after I shut off the camera, I was able to break uh, the mount, uh, the spring purse loose. Um, and I'm just going to kind of throw this out there. Newbie welding, cold, no penetration. I was able to knock that off without having to cut it. There's no cleanup on the inner side of that, which is sad and pathetic. But luckily that's just on the spring perch. So all the weight is down on top of the axle. As long as there isn't too much movement, it'd be okay. I'm not condoning cold weld, um, but it's kind of hard to say. This is what I had to cut. This is where the other weld was, came right off. I have like no cleanup to do there. So yeah, the only cleanup I have to do is here, and this is right where I'm putting uh, putting the, the coilover mounts. Whoop. Microphone fell. Mic check one too. All right, now onto this side. This side's a little bit different. Uh, so I have my my tie rod. I'm sorry, track bar tied into this. So what I um, into my um, that was weird. I have my tie, my track bar tied in. What are you? Oh, I'm pushing on the thing. I have my track bar tied into uh, my strut tower or my spring perch uh, right here and here. So what I might just do is cut it three quarters of the way across the axle tube and just take the rest of uh, like try to cut this off, cut this off, and keep this like gusseting because my track bar mount was actually knock on wood been doing really well compared to some other people's. So I'm thinking about just kind of cutting it right here, cutting it all the way across, and just um, keeping this gusseting um, as additional uh, support for the track bar. Uh, but I'm going to kind of keep doing what I was just doing. I'm going to take it off piece by piece, take the cone, take the strut tower, or the shock tower. Oh wow, I'm exhausted and tired and sweaty. Um, so I'm going to take it off piece by piece, I'm going to take the cup, take the shock mount, and then uh, try to work on cutting this off without destroying this part of the cup uh, for the track bar. And that's kind of key. So let's get going on that. I'm not going to film because you guys have seen stuff getting cut off axles before, I hope. Um, and to be honest with you, it's hot, disgusting, and I really don't feel like keeping it cool for the camera. So I'll catch you back in a minute. So at this point, I lost audio on the GoPro, but what I'm doing here is walking around just kind of showing uh, some of the cutting and cleaning I need to do. Here I'm pointing out that I have a little bit of gusseting and a little bit of uh, structural support for the track bar. Kind of also describing how my brackets are going to go across the tube for the shock mounts on the very, very bottom. I want to tie into the tube, the truss, and the C's. So I'm kind of quickly going over the general shape of the holes I'm going to cut on both sides of the vehicle uh, to make room for the shock hoops, and I kind of go into a little bit of uh, a little bit of description about how the driver's side is a little bit more difficult than the passenger side, and you got to clear the brake master cylinder as well as uh, the brake lines and the track bar. So time to load up the old R Captain, get it ready, and let's start cutting.
sorry again, still no audio, but we'll just kind of walk through what we're doing right here. Just doing a quick walk around. Uh, I mocked up the driver's side with roughly how uh, the angle will need to be to clear the master cylinder and the brake booster and everything in that area. I also wanted to get an idea of uh, how much shaft I wanted showing uh, to get my vehicle you know, at ride height with the right amount of droop and the right amount of up travel, which is right around seven and a half inches. At least that's the goal. So I'm just kind of, you know, walking around trying to plan it all. And one thing I always knew that was going to have to happen, especially with running 16-inch shocks in the front, I was going to need to clearance with, you know, clearance the hood or cut a hole in the hood. And this is basically giving me an idea of just how much poke through I'm going to have when I'm done. It appears to be about two and a half, three inches of, uh, you know, poke out. So I plan on notching the hood when we're all said and done. And outside of cutting the spring perches off the body, uh, my other big uh, concern was how I was going to mount the shock hoops to the vehicle. Now, on the passenger side, that's not an issue, but I basically have the track bar to deal with, and it's kind of right in prime real estate in terms of where I would mount this. So I found a way to kind of incorporate the shock hoop into the track bar. Uh, I just don't know how I'm going to finalize it just yet. I'm going to play with a couple different things. Uh, which I'll probably showcase in the next video, but for now, this is kind of how I have it set. Uh, I might uh, box everything out and actually use the track bar as part of the mount for the shock hoop. Uh, time will tell with that one. So stay tuned, there will be more to come and how I continue along putting front coilovers in the vehicle. So until then, we'll catch you on the next one.